I've never done this before, so please bear with me on this. This is after seeing not only the op the new cinematic opening as well as the reveal trailer, I had to make a video talking about it. Hello everyone, this is Mega Man NG, and I welcome you guys to a little special video that I've made. If you're wondering why there's no Xenoblade Chronicles 2 yet, please bear with me, that'll be coming tomorrow, okay? Alright, I'm not gonna make any more excuses about this. So, today's a special day, because I want to show off, or rather provide my thought, my honest thoughts, on the recent announcements regarding Street Fighter V. You guys know that Street Fighter V hasn't been doing so well, although on the competitive side of things, that's a different story. But casuals, forget about it. Capcom answered the question, or rather fixed it, by announcing that they will be releasing an arcade edition of Street Fighter V containing all the content from Season 1 and Season 2. Those who pre or per I mean, those who purchased Street Fighter V when the game was first released will be getting this update for free. Which, thankfully, I am happy with, because... Capcom has a rather questionable track record. If you guys know, it happened with Street Fighter 4. They released Street Fighter 4, then they went full on with Super Street Fighter 4. And then Super Street Fighter 4 got an I I mean an add-on, Arcade Edition, which was like what, $20? And then went from Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition to Ultra Street Fighter 4, which was yet another add-on for 20 bucks, and it had a physical release for 40. However, here with Street Fighter 5, that's not the case. For those who purchased Street Fighter V when it came out, it comes out uh, Arcade Edition for free. There will be a physical release for it on January 16th, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is pretty much my thoughts and reactions regarding two things. The reveal trailer for Sakura, as well as the cinematic opening that they showed off in glorious, beautiful fashion. Let's start things off with Sakura, shall we? And you notice the music changing? Sakura's theme song from Street Fighter Alpha 2. Yeah, that. I need to make it be appropriate. Anyway, yeah, upon looking at the trailer, it's nice seeing Sakura again. Sakura's actually gotten a new look, and she looks just as good. She looks amazing, as a matter of fact. Way more of an improvement from how she was in Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 5, she's gotten a new garb, and according to her backstory, she graduated high school and now works part-time in an arcade. Fitting because she has one of those community, like these headsets that you saw in Japan, or people who work in arcades need to have those around to check up on each other in case something comes up. Which is kind of fitting. It kind of fits like there because arcades in Japan are still going strong and people spend a lot of money sometimes playing arcade games. Makes me wish I want to one day travel to Japan and see for myself because there's so much I want to do. Anyway, regarding her gameplay style, she played just as she was in every Street Fighter game. Whether it be Street Fighter Alpha 2 or Street Fighter 4, she's just the same way. She has a few changes, mind you, a very few changes. If you notice during the gameplay, she has she, one of the new things that they, they added was a diagonal fireball, the Tenyo Hadouken, which you'll be seeing in a bit. And she also has access to an air throw. If you're looking at this gameplay right now with Balrog, you see she after he does the fireball, Balrog does his charge attack, she blocks, and then you'll see her V reversal. Her V reversal allows her to do a low sweep that can knock opponents down. It's pretty nice because she can be able to get the either gut forward, move the distance, or rather go pa or like go away and hopefully buy a bit of time. And then next up, we get to move on to the fight with Abigail. And we get to see more of her, and now we get to see her first V trigger. Her first V trigger is the Haru Arashi. Her Haru Arashi powers up her Hadouken and her Tenyo Hadouken. If you see in the gameplay right here, after she does the fireball, the fireball that falls, it does two hits, and it causes a juggle stay. The juggle stay allows the player to extend combos with Sakura, and Sakura follows it up with an uppercut. In addition to this, she also has access to a palm strike that can be done as a combo ender. You see in this gameplay with Ryu right there, after she does some of the moves, she does a palm strike that can follow it up to deal more damage. And it can also be served as a pretty good either a combo extender or a combo ender. And we get to see more gameplay with her. She, like I mentioned already, she has an air throw she can be able to use. Like when Vega was trying to do her, his air throw, Sakura countered with her own. And her air EX is like a spin hurricane kick, like in a still work fashion. It's pretty awesome, I tell you. It's pretty awesome. And then the next clip shows with her fighting against Rashid. And we also get to see her second V trigger, the Sakura Senpu. Her Sakura Senpu powers up her Shoken and Senpu Kyaku for added damage. They're pretty much improved versions of the EX versions, or rather EX versions of their moves, and can be done up to four times. 
it's pretty useful if you want to like extend a lot of damage and be able to deal with the pain. And in addition to that, she also has that access to the jumping palm strike that she had in Street Fighter Alpha 3, which you have to do a dragon punch motion with a kick and she jumps up in the air and smacks the opponent three times with a third going straight down. And after that, we get to see the gameplay leading up in the end, showing off the stage for her, and the stage, good god, the stage is so awesome. We also see her critical art, the Sakura Rain. But here's the thing, if it's used away, it's pretty much a high dam damaging fireball. But if used up close, it leads to a special animation that deals a lot more damage. And trust me, it is just incredible to see. It is just incredible, and it's so painful too. The stage itself, the Kasugano Residence, is also seen, and it looks just as it was in Alpha 2, but so much more better. I will admit, Street Fighter V, in terms of its stage designs, are pretty enjoyable to look at, especially when they bring back some of the more older stages. Like, for example, they brought the Suzaku Castle from, I believe, the original Street Fighter 2, and it's still just as lovely to look at. There was also the Flamenco Tavern, Vegas stage, and there was also M. Bison stage, and now they bring this one, and wow. Now I feel really nostalgic, because I always remember playing Alpha 2 in the old days. Good times. But seeing this here, complete with her pet dog and her younger brother, Tsukushi, it's just awesome. Now, in addition to this, I'm also going to be talking about the cinematic opening for the Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. I'm showing a few of the clips here. I'm not going to show everything, but if you want to see it, the link's in the description down below. But the trailer for this is just truly a delight of the light to see. It really goes to show how far Street Fighter V has gotten. And sure, it had a bit of a rough start, but it's just so much more better that Capcom is actually listening. They are actually listening to the fans, and they're finally going to deliver on this. I am going to give credit where credit is due, Capcom. You really did deliver on it. Well done. I liked it. But what was most interesting about this is that they also showed off all the new characters. The characters that you're going to be seeing for Season 3. And... How do I feel about this? My reactions to these are just incredibly hyped. Like, for example, in one part you see Sakura and Blanca. Blanca's pretty obvious because of Ono, Yoshinori Ono. And before I say anything else, Ono is a troll and he gets paid to do it. Anytime you see a Blanca toy in a photo or something like that, you know Ono's about. Although personally, I feel that Blanca may be Ono's favorite character. I really do like Blanca's look, which... Given how he is, it hasn't changed much, but it's a while after Street Fighter 4, so Blanca's design is alright. I do like Sakura's though. And then following up after we saw a preview of Manat, there's G, the newest character, one of the new characters. Her, his name is G, and I don't know whether to call him Uncle Sam or Abraham Lincoln. I'd rather call him Abe Lincoln in this because he has the beard, he has the black top hat, I mean, come on. How, how can you deny that? I really am excited for G. It's just... I, I don't... I can't! I, I'll be honest, I really can't. But the biggest surprise came next after that. And you saw in one scene with Zeku, and then after that, there's the jail cell. And then next thing you see... Cody. If you guys remember Cody from Street Fighter 4, well, he got himself in trouble with the law and ended up in jail. He broke out, but knowing him, he'll probably go back. But here... Cody is completely changed. He's gotten clean cut. He's changed for the better. And judging by how he looks, he's now become the new... I think he may be the new mayor of Metro City. I'm more curious what had happened to him since then because a lot has changed for the guy and I felt all that change came for the worst. Hopefully here, seeing how he looks, I am happy for the character. I'm more curious about his story. And then afterwards... Mere words can't describe it. Sagat. Sagat finally comes to Street Fighter V and this character has been heavily requested. Heavily requested because it wasn't going to be Street Fighter without him. You have Ryu, but it's not complete without Sagat. And seeing the, like, seeing the animation with him fighting Ryu is just awe-inspiring. I am curious to see how he plays, and if he plays just as he was in the previous games, then I have more of a reason to go back and play this game again, because I'll be honest, I am really... Really hyped for Street Fighter V Season 3. And you can tell when Ryu did the shore, you can have got the animation is just marvelous. And then at the end after that, we also get to see another of the new characters. Fake. F-A-I-K-E. That's what it sounds, so I'm not the liberty to say. 
Judging by how she looks, she is pretty cool. She also is a staff user. How she plays, I hope to find out. And seeing her near Ed, especially in Ed's character storyline, I'm more curious as to how she is. But, yeah, Capcom, you convinced me. You convinced me enough that this is going to be worth my time. I haven't played Street Fighter V after I completed the Season 2 character story. But after today, after today, once it comes out in January, I am really hyped for this. I truthfully am, because there's no denying it. Capcom listen, and it shows. I really am excited for these characters. I really am excited for Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. I heard there's going to be a lot of new modes. There's going to be finally an arcade mode, but the arcade mode for that is going to be absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why, it just is because it's just celebrating 30 years of Street Fighter, and it's doing so in a really insane way. Now, I could do another video talking about that, but I'm here to provide my thoughts on not only this, the reveal trailer, but also the cinematic opening along with it. The release date for this Season 3, as well as Arcade Edition, is January 16th, 2018. The game Fortnite main. Not to mention the Season 3 character pass. You guys know the Season 3 characters have been announced and revealed. No silhouettes this time, Capcom's not going to be doing that method again. This time, they just want to be discreet, they want to make sure to be straight to the point, and reveal all the characters. Sakura, Blanca, Falk, Cody, Guy, and Sagat. And my guess is this is actually going to be the release order for all the characters. Well, nice work Capcom. Nice work, you've already like gained more points from doing this. But I also heard that if you actually pre-order the character pass for Season 3, you also get your hands on some anniversary costumes as well as some nostalgia costumes for the characters. So it's a nice incentive, a nice reward, because as somebody who actually paid $60 full price on the game when it came out in 2016, then another $60, $30 individually for both season passes, I felt now that by this point, it may be too little too late, but at least Capcom seems to get it. They seem to get it, they seem to understand it, and more importantly, I'm happy at least that they're actually doing something right. But what will happen from here, who knows, because now the hype is on. And there's also more hype considering that we're getting a Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection coming out in May. 12 arcade games, or rather 12 Street Fighter games in one package, with four of them providing online play. Now I can finally get a reason why not to play Ultra Street Fighter 2 anymore and just stick to either Super Turbo, Hyper Fighting, or Alpha 3, or Third Strike, whichever works. Yeah, but I want to ask, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about the reveal for Sakura? What do you guys think of the cinematic opening that revealed all the new characters? Are you excited for Street Fighter 5 Arcade Edition? Please let me know in the comments what you guys think, and that will be it for this video. This is my first time doing something of an analysis video, and I'm not that pretty good. I try my best, but I want to make sure that you guys are well informed. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. It really does mean a lot to me. And if you guys want to see me do Street Fighter V again when Season 3 comes out, tell me. I will be doing it regardless because I have a promise to keep. I already did it with Street Fighter V Season 1 and Season 2. Gotta do the same here with Season 3. So yeah, this is Mega Man NJ signing off. Peace out.